Are you incredibly bored during quarantine and want to start a YouTube channel? Well, today's video is going to be the perfect guide to growing a YouTube channel in 2020. Let's get that plaque. Hey guys, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Without further ado, I just want to get on into the tips because I know that's what you guys came here for. And I know there are a lot of basic tips that every single YouTuber says, and I don't want to like blab on about them. So I'm just going to list them super quickly and talk about each of them for like five seconds. Consistency. You want your subscribers to be pleased and also YouTube loves that for the algorithm. Posting at least two times a week is a good ballpark if you have the time. Be yourself. People can tell if you're not being yourself and in the end you want subscribers to actually like you for yourself because if you start acting like yourself and they're like, you changed, it's a bit of a messy situation. Be patient. Growth takes a while. I was on YouTube for four years before even getting paid a cent. Keep that in mind. Okay, now we're gonna get on into the juicy tips that not a lot of YouTubers will tell you. The first tip I have for you guys is so important and it's to make content that you would watch yourself and content that brings value. We can really get caught up in views and just trying to go viral, but I think it's super important to evaluate the actual content itself. Would I send this to all my friends? Like would I send this for a film school application? <laughs> I know that seems a little bit extreme, but you want to make content that is going to be super engaging and valuable to a viewer. A lot of how-to videos are super good for this current moment because a lot of people are at home and want some DIY type of videos. Any videos that bring value to other people, like teaching someone something, entertaining someone. My biggest recommendation if you're first starting a channel is to not stay away from vlogs, but make sure that vlogs is not the majority of the content that you're posting. I post vlogs with the intention of either keeping a memory or catering to my already subscribers, but I don't really make them with the intention of bringing in new subscribers because if I'm being honest, Honest, no one wants to watch a vlog if they don't know who you are unless it's like a travel vlog and they really want to go there but no one wants to watch it if they don't know who you are you are irrelevant to them in their mind I'm just being honest I've seen that in my own analytics you can still make vlogs I still make vlogs but just make sure that if you're trying to grow a lot it's not the majority of your content Hey y'all, so in between clips, I'm going to talk about like equipment, hate, things like that. A popular question that people ask often is like, do you need a camera to start a YouTube channel? And my answer would be to start a YouTube channel, you definitely don't need a camera. I started with my iPod, but I definitely would say having a camera will benefit you. Mainly videos that blow up where someone is using their phone, they have like a bomb personality. And I'm not saying that most people don't, but if you're filming on your phone, I think it's really important important to really let your personality shine and be super bold and just like funny. You start on your phone if you don't have a camera for like three months and if you love YouTube then I'd invest in a camera. This camera right over here is definitely my favorite. This camera is the best camera in my opinion for beginners. It's a Canon G7X. It's super easy. You can just vlog like this on it. It's super light. It literally fits in my pocket. So if you want to like vlog at school and stuff, this is a super handy camera and it's only like $500. And I also have a DSLR. I never use this camera, okay? I just don't think having a big camera is necessary for YouTube, but it's nice for like photo shoots in my backyard. I'm currently filming on the EOS M50. I love this camera. It's super light, just like the G7X. So I definitely considered that one too. I'll just leave everything I use in the description. The second tip is to make sure your video flows nicely and is very engaging. Like a lot of jump cuts, don't like go overboard with the jump cuts. A really good tip for you guys is to just make sure you get a ton of footage in different locations, doing different things. I think that's super important and also b-roll i'll put some clips above here of what i mean by b-roll it's basically extra footage that you take before or after you film your talking part of your video just to tell your story better and i think b-roll makes a world of difference sometimes when i just have a clip of me talking for like 30 seconds i feel like i should put some b-roll because you want to keep the viewer engaged our mission as youtubers is to try to keep viewers on our video for as long as possible try your best to get as much footage and also do your jump cuts if you have like four hours of footage and you cut it into 10 minutes, that's a very engaging 10 minute video that people are going to watch till the end of. The goal of the YouTube algorithm is for your video to be watched 
till the end. YouTube is a business and they want people on their app and their website as much as possible. So if your videos are keeping people on for like 10 minutes, then that's great. You know, YouTube wants that. So that's what's gonna make your videos go viral. Okay, let's talk editing. Editing is a huge part of your videos, just flowing how good they are going to look. It's actually so cool with editing that you can really take your own creative path on what you want the video to convey. Well, I could give four people the same footage and they could send back different videos because of the editing style, what they chose to put in, what they cut out. When you're first starting, I definitely recommend starting with iMovie or just a free software. But again, after three months, if you really love it, I definitely recommend investing in Final Cut Pro. I wish I invested in Final Cut Pro much earlier because it just makes editing so much easier. Learning how to edit can be so tough, so definitely watch YouTube tutorials on how to edit. Every single time I was confused with something on Final Cut Pro or iMovie, I just searched up a tutorial on YouTube and that really helped me. My third tip is extremely important. It's probably like the first or second big factor in a video going viral and it is your thumbnail, okay? Your thumbnail is so important because YouTube could push out your video to so many people, but if no one clicks on it, then it's not going to do well. Some tips for thumbnails is make sure that you're conveying emotion in them. I wouldn't say that all my thumbnails have emotion in them, but if you're doing like a shocking video and you have that in your face, that's really going to convey what you're trying to say in the video and it's going to attract people to that video. And you could also try to make your thumbnail very aesthetically pleasing. I've made videos like this in the past with like more aesthetically pleasing thumbnails and people just like clicking on them because of the look. This thumbnail was a perfect example of an aesthetic thumbnail because a brand new Melville t-shirt in a room has nothing to do with video ideas not really but since it was an aesthetically pleasing thumbnail people clicked on it so just make sure your thumbnails look nice and I always like to ask people on Instagram like which thumbnail should I use making multiple thumbnail options is super important I never go with my first draft with a thumbnail I make multiple drafts because seriously a thumbnail can make a world of difference and it's a waste of time if you work so hard on your video but your thumbnail is trash audio I used to think that audio wasn't that big of a deal and then it didn't make that much of a difference in YouTube videos but it actually does. Audio is 50% of a YouTube video. Once you realize that, everything will change. I have a built-in mic from Rode. It was just like $50, but it's definitely a worthy investment. If you want to have free audio, just use your phone or any device and go into like voice memos. And when I'm filming a sit down video, I'll just put my phone next to my camera if I don't have a built-in mic on the camera. Voice memos work so well. The beginning of your video should be captivating. That is my fourth tip. I mean, I feel like I've always known this but recently I've really started to put that into practice like making super short intros because I know you guys are not here to see me be like go follow my Instagram okay I mean you can say that I say that at the end of my videos but just trying to make your intros as short as possible you know putting your Instagram on the screen instead of saying it just things like that I would try to keep your intros under 20 seconds if you really want people to watch because a lot of people click off in the first 30 seconds and I've seen that in my analytics and I've seen my video analytics actually improve once I make a lot shorter intros. Also keep your outros less than 20 seconds. No one really stays till the outros. I mean, unless they're like an OG fan or whatever. I used to make like end screens, like have my end screen over there with other videos you can watch. If you didn't know, this is what an end screen is. And as you can see in my analytics, everyone has dropped off of my video at the time where I actually show the end screen. Oh. It is what it is. It is, it is what it is. <laughs> so I don't necessarily recommend doing that. I feel like it's kind of like a waste of time in your video. This is kind of like a smaller tip, but I just want to throw it in there. YouTube tends to favor videos that are around like 10 minutes and people love watching videos that are around 10 minutes. So definitely try to shoot in that ballpark. And if you're monetized on YouTube, you can put ad breaks in a 10 minute video. So you can like put ads in the middle of the video and that is really going to help your video actually grow more because YouTube pushes content that has a lot of ads so they can make more money. The last thing I'm going to talk about here is hate. Hate can be hard to deal with and I want to be completely human about that because a lot of people are like don't let it get to you and yes don't let it get to you but
but I do want to validate that it does get to me sometimes and it can be tough to read through hundreds of positive comments but you see one hate comment that really you know gets to you and it just like sets off the tone for your day which sucks but it's totally human my tips for that is you can always block out words like in your channel you can search up on YouTube how to do that but also I feel like the best way to deal with hate is to have a very strong security in yourself and also realize that these people only see a fraction of your life they don't even see half of it you're definitely human if hate gets to you my fifth tip is not super vital but it's something I really wish I did when I was really first starting YouTube and really starting to grow I wish I promoted my other social medias more people following you on Instagram can make a world of difference you can promote your videos on Instagram you can really get feedback from your subscribers from your Instagram I think I promote my Instagram a lot more now when my channel was first starting to like blow up I really did not promote my Instagram that much I think my Instagram would be a lot bigger to the ratio of my YouTube channel if I started promoting it earlier and you can always DM me if you need any advice on your YouTube channel those were all my tips for today if you guys want a part two just let me know because I have a ton of tips to share with you guys and I have a how I edit my YouTube videos actually coming soon so stay tuned for that one don't forget to like subscribe and comment and follow me on my Instagram and I'll see you guys in the next one